Hi, so if you watched any of my recent videos, you may have seen that there's an SSL UF1 controller on my desk, but I really wasn't planning to make a video about it until I had a good few months in with it, because it's quite a deep device, it has a lot of functions, and I really wanted to get some experience in to see how I liked it and how I used it in my everyday work in my home studio. However, last week SSL had a new software release for this device, which makes it a lot more useful for Cubase users and users of other doors as well. And I haven't really seen a lot of videos about it on YouTube yet. So I figured let's make sure that all of you know if you maybe have an SSL UF1 or maybe you're thinking about buying one in combination with Cubase or another door. So let me explain and let's go. Now I have to say that for years I have been controlling and using Cubase with mouse and keyboard only. And that has never really been a problem. I can still find my way very easily with just mouse and keyboard. However, for my video editing, I've been using DaVinci Resolve since the start of this channel. Also just with mouse and keyboard, but somewhere after about one and a half years, I got a new PC with new hardware and the free version of DaVinci Resolve that I was using thus far could not fully take advantage of the capability of the video card. So I got DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is a paid version. And at that time it came with a free DaVinci Resolve speed editor. And that's this device. It has a nice jog wheel on there, lots of buttons. And even though initially I thought I would not use it very much, I have been using it ever since. Probably only 10% of its capabilities, but I find it actually very convenient to use this while editing video. So when SSL released their UF1, which is a one fader control surface for DOS, I was kind of interested because it also featured a jog wheel, transport controls, one fader, maybe to do some automation easily. So I bought it to check it out. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video. I bought it with my own money and I definitely don't know all ins and outs yet let's quickly check out some of the features that i've been using to have a little context for the software update that i'm going to talk about in a minute so this is an empty cubase project which just contains a lot of channels for demonstration purposes 30 stereo channels 30 mono channels and some additional channels of other channel types to see how the controller works with those channel types so on the uf1 you have this nice big channel control which allows you to scroll through the channels of cubase as you can see over here and then for the select channel you can control the fader control solo mute pan position if you go to the project view you can see that i have my jog wheel and my transport play stop rewind fast forward and on the top i can also set what these four buttons are used for for example now they can be used for effect sense or for the Cubase EQ, maybe the channel strip, etc. But I have to say I mostly use these knobs for pan position. And when you set it to pan, you can see that this one controls the pan position of the first channel. And these ones now control the pan position of the following channels in the bank. And you can also go to the remaining channels of the bank of eight channels. Now this is all fine, works really well, but there was still a bit of a problem with the SSL UF1 following the selected channel in Cubase. Let me show you, because if I scroll through the channels over here, you can also see there is this little white line here, which is the currently selected bank of channels. So right now, channels 9 to 16 are in the current bank of the UF1. If I select another channel with the mouse, you can see that the UF1 follows the channel over here perfectly. However, if I select a channel outside of the bank, you can see that it no longer does this. So if you're selecting other channels in Cubase, the device only follows the selected channel if they are in the currently selected bank of the UF1. Now you can, of course, also now go up a bank with these keys over here. So if I now go up a bank, you see that now the correct audio channel is selected again, audio channel 22. Now it appears that this is actually a structural problem of the Mackie protocol that is being used to communicate between the device and Cubase. And there are also multiple doors which have the same problem. I also saw a video of a German YouTube channel in which he tried to use the UF1 with Studio One and he actually sent it back because he could not get this working. And I can understand, it's really what you want, right? When you work on a channel in Cubase and you select it, you really want that fader and the other buttons like mute and solo to immediately also select that channel so that you can quickly grab the control and work on the same channel that you are working on in Cubase. Now I have to say for me, it was not that big of a problem. I would just use the channel selector to select the proper channel or switch banks. 
but you have to kind of be careful because the fader might not be synced to the channel that you thought it was. Now at the same time I understood that other doors which also use the Mackie control protocol worked perfectly fine, so it may have to do with Steinberg's implementation of the Mackie protocol. Couldn't quite figure that out, but the fact is it didn't quite work as you wanted with Cubase and a lot of other doors as well. Now there was another option because you can also switch the device to communicate via the plugin mixer mode and then it's not using the Mackie protocol but it's using SSL's own proprietary protocol which is however not implemented in Cubase so what you needed to do is that you would need to install an SSL channel strip plugin on every channel in your project and in that case those individual plugins would talk to this device know when they were selected and everything related to track selection actually worked how you wanted it but you had to buy one of these SSL channel strip plugins and and install them on every channel in your mix even though you may not want to use them because for me I have my favorite plugins for various instruments and that's not always an SSL channel strip and they're quite expensive as well for example you could use SSL 4KE which is normally 329 euros or the 4KB which is also 329 euros Currently this one is on offer if you own a UC1, UF1 or UF8 for 129 but still I just paid over 600 euros for the UF1 so then you had to buy another expensive plugin to get the behavior you want. But SSL recently released the SSL 360 link plugin and that plugin is free and kind of fixes the problem in the same way that the channel strips did. Now before we dive into that if you like this video or find it useful at all please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets spread to more people subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video. For more support you can use the super thanks button below the video as a virtual tip jar or buy anything via the affiliate links in the description of the video in which case I will get a small kickback without any extra cost to you which is highly appreciated. But let's check out the SSL 360 link plugin and how it solves the selection issue. Because what we can now do is we can put an SSL link plugin on every channel and this is basically that plugin and the plugin was actually released and is now marketed by SSL for being able to control third party plugins non SSL plugins via their UC1 control service which you can also partially do via the UF1 by the way and I'll show you that a bit later but for me and I think for a lot of you that own UF1 or are thinking about buying one is the fact that you can now have the UF1 follow your track selection in Cubase without buying expensive SSL plugins. Let's have a look. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to open another project which has all of these SSL plugins on every channel. Which I prepared already in advance because I don't want you to suffer through me putting 80 plugins on all of these channels. But what is important is that we have a look at the current performance without the SSL link plugins. You see it barely registers a couple of percent. So let's now open the project which has the SSL 360 link plugin on every channel. And you can most easily see that in the mixer view, right? SSL link plugins on every channel. Now you may be thinking, oh, hang on, all those plugins, does it not take a lot of performance? So let's check out the performance meter over here. And as you can see, it is still pretty much as minimal as a project without the SSL 360 link plugins. And in order for the device to now control Cubase via these plugins, I have to switch the so-called layer. I think it's more of a control mode and you do that by pressing 360. And then you can see that you can switch it to plugin mixer mode over here. And right now the device is controlling Cubase via these plugins on every mixer channel. I can still do the same thing over here, which is switch channels via this encoder here. I have my solo button, my mute button, fader works. I can move through a big project in multiples of eight. But what's even more important, I can select any channel over here and you can see that the UF1 immediately follows that channel wherever I click and I can immediately control that channel with the buttons over here without having to make sure that the bank is correct as well. Now another nice feature that you can see over here is that the color coding is now also followed. So whatever color I have in the Cubase channel over here, for example, I'm now on a yellow channel. You can also see it here in the UF1. If I move to a red channel, you can see it color red as well. So that's another benefit of using the SSL 360 link plugin and the UF1 in plugin mixer mode to control Cubase. Transport controls still work. Let me show you that over here. Jock wheel still works as expected. Rewind fast forward. I can start recording, etc. Now, by the way, if you have a UF1 and you want to set this up, you need to make two changes on the SSL 360 software. 
You basically see all your channels as well with the SSL 360 link plugin on there. You have to make sure that in your SSL UF1 plugin, you have actually configured the layer, layer two to be plugin mixer layer. And you say that UF1 follows selected plugin mixer channel strip instances, because that's what makes the selection work. And the second thing that you have to make sure that you set is when you go to the mixer overview, where you can see all your SSL 360 link plugins, you have to make sure that this is set to door mode, because if you set this to plugin mode, then the fader controls the fader in the plugin and not Cubase's fader. So set this to door mode and it will all work as expected. Now there are a couple of things to be aware of in this plugin mixer mode. For example, if we go back to the mixer and if we scroll all the way to the right where I have my special channels, let's navigate there. Then you can see that I can control a virtual instrument channel. I can control a sampler track channel, but a MIDI channel, it just skips it because it's not an audio channel, so I cannot put the SSL 360 link plugin on there. Instead, I can only put MIDI plugins on there. Group channel, however, works fine. Effects channel works fine, but I can also not navigate to a VCA channel because a VCA channel can also not contain the SSL 360 link plugin because it's not an audio channel. So those are a few limitations that you need to be aware of if you want to use the plugin mixer mode of the UF1. And another thing that's different, of course, is that the controls here do not offer exactly the same features as the Mackie protocol does. Because previously you could see here effects sense and Cubase EQ. And right now you see all kinds of other options, which are more related to the plugins that you can instantiate within SSL 360 link. And you can then control those plugins, which can also be third party plugins via the control service. Let's have a short look at that as well, because it's really intended for the UC1 controller, but it also does work on the UF1. Because if you open the SSL 360 link plugin, there's a click to load button over here and you can open your plugin library. Now, the first time that you use this, it needs to scan all your plugins. But for me, it did. And you see over here that it has a number of favorites. And that's because for those plugins, it has pre-mapped controls. So you don't need to set it up by yourself. For example, I regularly use the BX console SSL 4000E, which is now instantiated in this plugin. And I can see that by clicking this one over here, you can see this is the plugin Alliance SSL 4000E hosted in 360 link. If you click this button, you see the parameter mapping. And what's also nice to do is to automatically open hosted plugin. If you open the SSL 360 link plugin, if you click that and you close this, then whenever you open this SSL 360 link plugin, it basically opens both plugins at the same time. And if I now select the right channel, you can see that I then have controls over here for controlling buttons on the plugin like the invert face, or let's see, the input gain button over there, the high pass filter, the low pass filter. I can move further on the pages, EQ on off. I can switch to brown knobs or black knobs here on the bands, gain of the low mids, frequency of the low mids, etc. So you can also use the controls on the UF1 to control your plugins. It's just not so convenient and easy to see as on the UC1, which has all dedicated buttons for all those controls. And over here, you need to scroll through pages to get to the right control on one of those four buttons or on the keypad on top of the display. Now, something that I didn't show in the Mackie control protocol mode is the fact that the UF1 also has a very nice meter plugin, which also still works in the plugin mixer mode. I can just switch the mode over here. And then you can see that it has a nice loudness metering mode as well as a view meter mode, which is the one I usually have enabled when using the UF1 actually. And it has a nice frequency analyzer as well in that meter. And for me, I have the meter installed as a plugin in my control room so that whatever audio I'm running through the control room, I can see it on the SSL meter, which is a very nice feature of the UF1 as well. And it also still works in the plugin mixer mode or layer. Now, did you know that there's also a free app for your phone or tablet that you can use to control Cubase? If that sounds interesting, I'll link the video up here. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.